This is the new way of policing here in Camden, New Jersey. There are 221 street corner cameras, and they monitor almost every inch of the city 24 hours a day. You can see exactly where in the city it's located. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you can hit a street view, and the officers will know. It'll be by the third house at the end of the block. Officers also listen to dozens of microphones that help identify shootings. That's 20 bullets being fired. It all happens from the safety of their multi-million dollar surveillance hub. Camden completely dissolved its police department a decade ago. Its goal was to combat internal corruption, spiking crime rates, and save the city money. Today, it's a model for both reform and surveillance-based policing. You've made real progress in just two years. Other cities across America can make similar progress. But some community members question whether the department has overstepped its boundaries. Camden City is not a model police department unless you want to have your city and your residents under surveillance 24 hours a day. Every step you make, someone has a possibility of watching you. We went inside the Camden County Police Department to see if reform resulted in better policing or what some worry is over-policing. They do virtual patrols. So we may not be in the neighborhood, but we're still able to watch and look. And this level of surveillance, do people ever question or talk about that? Yes, they do talk about it. Why, why isn't there a camera on my block? They, they want the cameras. They, they, people want to feel safe. A team of civilians look for situations that could lead to crime. One program called ShotSpotter uses 75 microphones placed around the city to triangulate the location of gunfire. Since 2013, the command center has been one of the department's crowning achievements. In fact, there are less than 90 centers like this across the nation, according to research tracked by the University of Nevada. Body cameras are also a critical part of the department's tech strategy. Officer Anthony Alvarez is reviewing a call he responded to when a man was threatening to harm himself and others. He's looking for areas where he could have improved. Hey, buddy, can I talk to you real quick? The suspect held what looked like sharpened drumsticks. Eventually, his partner deploys a taser. Your mind kind of goes there, like, you're nervous that this could go, you know, the worst possible way. Anthony's supervisor gives him feedback. Good job going into talking to them. They didn't scream at them. Drop the sticks, drop the sticks. You didn't agitate the situation. Officers also work through de-escalation techniques with role play scenarios. Do me a favor and put that knife down. Do me a favor and put that knife down. Okay, all right. All right, listen, I'm here to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Hey, look at me, look at me. You know me. My name's Anthony. You're going to put the knife down, and for your safety and for my safety, I am going to place you into handcuffs. This type of training is a part of reforms that started in 2013, after Camden dissolved, rebuilt, and renamed the former police department. But in many ways, the story of Camden's overhaul starts in the 90s. Crime here had spiked to some of the highest levels the city had seen. And things kept getting worse throughout the 2000s. Corruption was widespread. Officers were caught pocketing money and framing suspects. Sergeant Ralph Thornton has worked as an officer in Camden since 1996. We came to work and we almost lost sight of who we were protecting. I heard other officers make comments such as, you know, Camden's a toilet, which is full of crap. I grew up in the projects, under one of the worst projects in East Camden. I'm not a criminal. People that come out of Camden aren't criminals but that's how police viewed them. By the end of 2010, the economic crisis was hitting Camden hard. For years, the city relied heavily on state aid, and the police accounted for about a half of the city's overall budget. 
Because of the department's expensive union contracts and its history of bad policing, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie slashed its budget in 2011, a moment widely reported by many news outlets. This was about responsible, caring leaders recognizing some undeniable truths about Camden City's law enforcement needs. One by one, police officers lined up 168 pairs of boots outside headquarters in Camden, New Jersey. One for each job lost. It's gonna be devastating. You know, who's to protect us? During the two years that it took to form the new police department, crime in Camden skyrocketed to the highest in the country. Homicides basically doubled within the next year and they were at the highest mark that they've been at for a long time. Camden brought in a new chief, implemented new technology and training, and eventually hired about half of the original staff. Even the city's former chief had to reapply. I had to do a 55-page application to apply for a job I'd been doing for, I believe at the time, was 22 years. It was really it was a decision that each officer had to make. Did you want to go through this? Did you want to be part of a new organization? Some officers refused to join the new force because of lower wages and union disagreements. And some community members petitioned to stop the disbandment altogether. Violent crime did eventually go down since the department launched in 2013. Homicides reached an all-time low in 2019. And these statistics became a regular talking point. We continue to drive crime down. Crime is down, the city is safer. We're 11% down in overall violent crime. But for some residents, lower crime doesn't mean the problem is fixed. This is like the, the tradition of what happens when someone in the street has been killed in a particular area. Wherever that area took place at, they do a memorial. Kevin Barfield has lived in Camden since the 70s. He says the new cameras and microphones were troubling for locals. I felt as though, and people in the community felt that we was under martial law. Critics say surveillance sparked fears of over-policing. A report from the Philadelphia Inquirer found that the number of excessive force complaints nearly doubled just a few years after the old department was dissolved. According to the department, those numbers have dropped significantly since then. Still, residents are wary. I know as a community and as someone who lived in that area, where the police presence was heavily present, that there was a lot of situations where community and businesses felt that they were kind of being harassed and picked on to try to bring this term law and order to the city. Today, Kevin is the president of the Camden chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP. You do not prevent crimes with technology. Where do you think the level of data-driven technology ends and community policing begins. I think more of the community would want to see is the more transparency, even in, in the data and how it's being reported. We have not seen any distinction in saying that this technology has helped to reduce this particular crime in this particular area. One thing they will say is that we have had less murders since 2013. Shortly after the new department was established, many officers quit or retired, and CCPD struggled over the years to keep its officers. How can you build any relationship or any kind of community policing wherein you're constantly seeing a high turnover of these um, new recruits that are coming and walking the street? And he points to the fact that more than half of the department's sworn officers are white, patrolling a city that's more than 95% minority. Still, many police departments that are trying to reform have been watching Camden, especially in the summer of 2020. As the nation is torn apart by turmoil, there is a renewed spotlight on one city in New Jersey. Police officers in Camden, New Jersey, are being praised tonight for joining the protesters there this weekend. Take a look at this photo, which says it all. Did you anticipate that type of reaction? I wanted to de-escalate a situation. We didn't invite any media to our protests. I was shocked by the attention that we got. We have to keep getting better. We have to progress with time. What we're doing in 2020 might not apply in 2030. We have to keep changing with the times. I think people at first, when you're introducing that change, might be a little bit skeptical, but we're going on seven years now of operating differently. What would the community say to that? I think the community would say, you had seven years to try to, to figure this out. I would think that a system would have been in place by now. 
the department is on the verge of change again. Chief Waisaki recently retired and handed over the reins to Gabrielle Rodriguez, who's the department's first Latino police chief. These problems in Camden didn't occur overnight, and we still have a long ways to go, but we're headed in the right direction. 